The Return to Gypsy Lake For thousands of years, the ancestors of Chippewan Prairie Dene Sutane have used Gypsy Lake for gathering fish to survive in the winter. Since the early 1970s, traditional food gathering from Gypsy Lake had stopped. This trip is reconnecting the Dene Sutane from Chippewan Prairie with a traditional and sustainable food source. Elder John Lameg tells us there wasn't a lot of fish at Garson Lake, so all the families would go to Gypsy Lake. Twenty families or more would stay there in the summer from May to October. They would stay about one kilometer apart. We fish for the winter time. Some people may kill up to 4,000 fish for food, for themselves and for the dogs. But first a trail had to be cut. Over the last 50 years, the traditional trail from Christina Crossing to Gypsy Lake has grown in, as the government has encouraged First Nations people to settle on reserves. We hired local laborers and equipment to clear this 25 kilometer trail to make safe winter access to Gypsy Lake, so that our fishermen have access to the lake's abundant and healthy fish. Elder Jeremy Jambe recounts that it used to not be snowmobile trails, but they used dog teams. And when they lived at Christina Crossing, they had five dogs and 14 in their family. They would hang 6,000 whitefish in November in Gypsy Lake. And these fish would last until March. They would need 10 fish a day for the dogs. And the family would eat two to three fish a day. Not every day though, because their dad was a really good hunter. So they always had meat. A dog team would bring fish to Christina Crossing or John v from Gypsy Lake and at least with 150 fish at a time. Chippewan Prairie are well known for their fishing skills. Setting net in both winter and summer is a part of their way of life. Here we can see how much work and skill is involved in setting a net in the winter. First you need to create a hole large enough for the jigger to pass through, typically around two foot square. In this case at Gypsy Lake, the ice was about four feet thick and required four holes to be drilled with the auger and then ice chunks needed to be chiseled away by hand. Once the jigger has been placed, it will travel the length of the net being used, and a second hole needs to be created to retrieve the jigger and set the net. Typically a net will be left for no more than 24 hours, and if needed, set again to further harvest. We went back the next day to pull the net, searching for those jumbo whitefish. It takes a lot of work to keep the net tangle free while pulling it out and untangling the fish at the same time. Here we watched the Chippewa Prairie with their skills as they harvest around 20 jumbo whitefish and 6 jackfish. Elder Jeremy Jomve says, in November the whitefish would spawn on the shores of the lake. They would set a huge fire on the shore at nighttime to draw the fish in. He remembers seeing their tails in the firelight. During the day the people would prepare by sharpening the large willow sticks to hang the fish on and to make spruce bough carpet to keep the sand and the mud away from where they had their nets. They would set a net by boat or canoe and bring it in. When the fish came in, it was like an assembly line with maybe three guys who would rotate jobs to keep their hands warm.
With this trail cleared and a good first harvest, Chippewa and Prairie now has access to the food source that sustained their ancestors. And for the first time in 50 years, fish from Gypsy Lake were brought back to feed the community. Samples were also brought in as part of a study to ensure a healthy food source. This will prove to be a high impact project as this new trail will provide healthy traditional food for Chippewa and Prairie for years to come.